Hey, what's up, buddy? What's up? How, you How are you? Oh, good. Good, good. Good, good. But for those wondering, are we lagging? No, we just we just said the same thing at the same time together. <laughs> One of those unifying things. Um, yes. Listen, man. So you know uh, that we are having our first in-person gathering this coming Sunday. Super excited about that. Um, mm. uh, we haven't been together in such a long time. Um, and just with COVID and, and all the restrictions, necessary restrictions, there's a lot that we're doing. Um, and seeing as you ha- are, not have become, but you are, uh, our in-house uh, COVID-19 uh, medical specialist. Uh, and I know that you- I don't know how that happened, by the way. <laughs> um, for, for, maybe those, for maybe those who remember when all of this started, uh, Dr. Should I call you Dr. Kuliso, is that, is that respectful? That, that's for work. That's um, but Kuliso was, was one of the, uh, the first people that came up on stage um, and just basically shared to us what was going on, gave us a lot more information about um, COVID-19. And then we even did a, a podcast. So I'd encourage you guys to go and listen to that. If you haven't, um, just search at our podcast. You'll find it. But um, so I figured with our first in-person gathering, it might be a good idea just to, again, touch base with you um, and just give some information to some people. Um, there's a lot of concern around this. I mean, we see it not just here in South Africa, but globally as well. Um, and so let me, let me say this. At our gathering, you know, we're planning to uh, have folks wear masks uh, to ensure that people sanitize when they come in. Uh, we're going to sanitize the place before people show up. We're going to sanitize it between the first and second gathering. Uh, we're going to take temperatures. We're, we're, doing, we're doing it all. Um, but maybe my question to you is, is that, is that overkill? Sh- should we be doing that? What are your thoughts on that? As a medical professional, um, how would you speak into that? So I think first I must qualify that uh, I think I said this before in the podcast, but just for completeness sake, I'm not infectious disease specialist, I'm not a public health specialist, um, but I do work in the space. Um, and I think it's, it's a difficult one. So at this point, a lot has happened between sort of February this year and now. Um, I think we've seen a lot and we've learned a lot. And in some ways, some of what we've learned has been a bit unhelpful, just a whole lot of noise from everywhere. Um, so I think we, as a society, we're quite overburdened by a lot of information. Um, and I think that's one of the thoughts that we should have going into um, reintegrating into society, because there's a lot to think about, a lot to consider. Um, and I think that can be overwhelming. So to address, there's a couple of things to address. There's the biomedical part, um, and there's the, I'll call it the psychological part. And both are equally important, but sometimes they may not speak to each other. So the, addressing the biomedical part, I think what, what Rooted is doing and what most people have done um, across societies, across the world, I think as far as we know, that's the best that we can do. It's evidence-based. Um, it has proved to be helpful. And... I think that actually is enough. So it's a very simple thing. Screening, which is temperature, um, and preventing droplet spread. So masks and sanitizing our hands. Those three measures by themselves are really, really helpful. And I think the best that we can do um, to reintegrate. That's the one aspect. The psychological aspect, again, I'm not a specialist, but I think it's one that we really need to think about quite seriously. Um, you know, we said in a separate conversation that people are coming from all different backgrounds in terms of stimuli that they've gotten you know in some people's spaces they've seen coronavirus face on um i've had family members who have had it they themselves might have had it and that might influence the way that they're thinking in one direction and for some people it's kind of been like well five months of hanging out at home and no real exposure so you know it's quite a chill thing so people are coming from all those backgrounds and i think we need to love and care for all of those people you know as they come into the melting pot the question is then, how do we reintegrate and when do we reintegrate? And I think what Richard's doing is, is awesome. You know, at some point, we have to just try. Um, and I think in trying, when I, mean, when I say try, I mean like meeting together, we have to realize that we are going to make mistakes. It's difficult to say, uh, but we are going to make mistakes and we're going to learn from them. But unless we kind of put a foot in the water, we'll never actually swim. So we kind of just have to, to go ahead and do it. Um, and I think the difficult thing is that because of what we know, and that's like the tiny part of the spectrum, and the bigger part is what we actually don't know. You know, it's <clears throat> like I said, we are going to make mistakes. So that being said, and I think we've seen the country do it as well, we kind of have to be quite conservative at the beginning. 
Um, and I think that'll help people in terms of engaging with one another as well. So it may be unnecessary for people to be 1.5 meters apart. It may be unnecessary for people to not shake hands. It may be really, really difficult to not hug your best friend. Um, you know, we've missed that, you know, if, it may sound weird to say, but we've missed how people smell. Like that's, that's something we've been void of for five months. Um, so all of that may be unnecessary in the long term. And we may look back and say, oh man, we, you know, so stressed for no reason. But I think for the sake of, of all of us coming back and not really knowing how to behave, it's kind of like a first date with all of us um, in the same space. I think it's just helpful to be conservative from the start. Um, and all the measures that we know to put in place and have the wisdom to do what God showed us to do, let's do that. And, you know, as we begin to know each other and, you know, maybe more information comes, we get more evidence from those that do the research, then we can say, okay, maybe we can now be one meter apart, you know, maybe we can now shake each other's hands and then sanitize afterwards, there's actually no risk. Those nuances, I think, will, will reveal themselves. Um, but I think from the start, it, it's perhaps more loving to be more conservative, even if it may not have a biomedical benefit, but for what we don't know, you know, let's rather do that. that that's my two cents that became 10 cents. Man, that was super helpful. I'm glad you spent all those cents. Um, <laughs> and, and, and great, great illustrations. Um, uh, you mentioned smell and I, and I can't wait to smell people, but I also want to encourage people if you're showing up, uh, just it's helpful if you smell nice. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but I, I like first date, you know, we, we are trying to figure out, it's been a while. It's been, you know, six, seven months. Um, and, and so, yeah, let's, let's go in, let's, let's try it. Let's see. I mean, I think it's going to be epic. I know it's going to be incredible, um, but we, we do, we do want to love our neighbors. I feel like that's the thing that you just kept, going back to at least that's what i heard is how can we best mm -hmm. love our neighbors um so that's mm -hmm. that's really helpful um let's chat a little bit about singing so we're, we're going to take the stance of uh this gathering to ask people to keep their masks on even as we're singing um and, and i know it's going to feel weird um i mean just talking with a mask on uh can can get a lot really uncomfortable but but we're going to ask folks to sing together you mentioned droplets you Maybe, maybe chat a little bit through us, like why, why you think that might be helpful, at least uh, in this early stage of us getting together. So we, we've spoken offline and I think just in my own readings, I've tried to look at some of the nuances. So I think we know uh, the, the broad topics, how coronavirus spreads broadly, um, sort of the typical day-to-day -day interactions, but there's certain nuances that science hasn't really had the opportunity to delve into, like public singing. So if people are in a, let's say, 30 by 30 space, and the place is well ventilated, and everyone is singing, which is release, maybe releasing droplets, what's the risk there? We don't know. We actually don't know. Um, and I think it's, like I said before, I think it's, it's loving that until we have a better idea. And it may not come from research, by the way. We, you know, we might stumble upon the answer. But I think until we have that answer in a way that makes us comfortable as a community, I think it's loving to, again, go on the side of caution. Um, you know, what biomedicine tells us is that if someone is close to you and you spread a... And now it's not actually droplets, actually. People are talking about, you know, microscopic particles, which is a whole rabbit hole in itself. Um, so again, to not get bogged down into that. And I think those... You know, I'll go out on limb and say, I think those are attacks of the enemy, you know, trying to lead us down paths where we, you know, just get bogged down by things that aren't actually the bigger picture. You know, how do we love each other? How do we engage with one another? How do we praise the Lord corporately, which is an important thing that I think God wants us to do. So I think for, for the sake of that, of just being in that first date, I'll make an example. I don't know how many people went on first dates. I didn't, praise the Lord. But for those that did, no one, no one eats ribs on a first date. And it's not that ribs are a bad thing to eat. It's just, you don't want that kind of drama. You don't want to navigate that space until you kind of know what you're doing with the person. So I'll take it like that. We don't know the nuances and the awkwardnesses and the potential exposure of singing without masks. So let's just not eat ribs for the first couple of months um, until, you know, we have a better idea. That, that would be my take. Yeah, super helpful. Mm -hmm. Really, really helpful. And I think even for us as a leadership, when, when, you know, posed with this question of like, what do we do and how do we do it? And what are other people doing? I mean, we've, we've spoken to tons of churches and leaders and, and again, we're going, this is our first time, um, man, how, how can we best love our neighbors? And, and it may not be the best decision for ev everyone. We know that. Um, mm -hmm. but we think this is probably the best way to love one another. Um, I think still getting together, 
uh, being with one another, singing together, praying together, having God's word preached. I think it's going to be great. So, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped about it. Uh, and, and what you've just shared is super helpful. Uh, if I could add one thing. Go for it. It's just, it's just to say that the process is dynamic. And I think, you know, as the leadership, you guys sort of discussed that as well. It's what we know now and what we act on now may not be the case even in a couple of hours time, let alone days, weeks, months, years. Um, and I think in the spaces I've been in, you know, even at work in, in medicine, grimy on the first line, or on the front line, sorry, um, things move. And things that we're scared about before change. Things that we're conservative about, we become chilled about. And some things we switch, actually, and realize, you know, we needed to be a bit stricter. There. And I think, for me, I found that helpful to know that what is uncomfortable and weird now may not be. And um, I think the, the big benefit, like I say, is being able to worship corporately. That's mm -hmm. a really important milestone. And also just to say to you and the leadership, I think it's awesome we've taken that step. I think people are hungry, really, really yeah. hungry for that. Yeah. No, no doubt. No doubt. I think people are. And, um, and it's going to be good. I, I really think it's going to be great. And, and, and so, man, thanks so much. Thanks so much for, for this you know, short little time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the floor one last time. Is there anything, anything else that you would love to share? Anything that you think would be helpful? Um, yeah. Is any closing words? <laughs> now I'm on the spot. Uh, no, man, I'll just say to continue to be safe. And like I said before on the podcast five months ago, um, my health is measured by the health of the collective. That's not only physical health, I think it's psychological health as well. So the decisions we make and the way we interact, let's really, not in a superficial way, but really consider um, our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Kali yeah. That yeah. Man, super helpful. Thanks so much, Doc. And, um, and yeah, so just, just with that, uh, uh, folks, friends, for those who are coming out, um, super excited. Can't wait to see you all. And, uh, and yeah, keep your mask on. Um, there'll be someone at the door, take your temperature, sanitize stations will be there. Um, you know, we'll be sitting one and a half meters apart, uh, unless you're with, uh, those from the same household and yeah we're looking forward to being together as god's people uh we are those who we don't live in fear right because of what jesus has accomplished on the cross um but but we do uh, want to steward our lives well and those around us well and we do so by loving our neighbors and so yeah man uh thanks so much again and uh yeah looking forward to seeing those who will be there and those who won't uh we'll see you guys digitally cool, thank bro. you thank you for having me on yeah ciao ciao